When people ask me like what my driving style is, I like to do most of my talking on the track. Once I realized that we had like a couple percent more energy than most of the cars in front of us, right? It was like, it was go time, right? I couldn't finish second in the championship in 2019. Like otherwise I would have been done. I don't know what I would be doing at this point. So for me, the scholarship system and the road to Indy was like the only way for me to make it to being a professional driver. Yeah, there's a lot of up and downs um, through my, my first IndyCar season. Obviously it's such, such a tough series, super physical, you know, a lot of fantastic drivers. Uh, but the, yeah, the moments that, that stood out to me um, Starting my first Indy 500 was, was fantastic and uh, also finishing on the podium in Iowa a couple weeks before that was, was definitely the highlight of the year. Made the fast six in my, my second weekend in, at the Indy GP and that was a couple, a couple of good memories. Celebratory donuts, oh, I think yeah. is now. There it is, burn those new tires off into the last you will need them to do. That's really the first time that we've seen Oliver ask you just kind of let it all out. Like, you know, most successful racing drivers, you have that like breakthrough weekend, right? And a lot of the success in motorsport and any other sport comes with, uh, come with, comes with just being confident, right? And so once I found that, uh, that confidence, then you know, the, the success came a lot easier for me. So yeah, ultimately I just had to go out there and I, had, I know I had really good equipment in the Andretti Autosport and the Lights car and um, yeah, I just had to go out and make it happen. <laughs> Oliver Askew in 17th place for the Andretti squad. Yeah, uh, unbelievable weekend in Saudi. Um, thoroughly enjoying myself so far here in Formula E and just hoping to like, keep learning, keep progressing. Yeah, well, all the preparation in the simulator has gone really well. Um, I've just picked it up right away. And obviously there's that question of like, can I translate that to the real thing, right? And it, and it did, honestly, like everything that I was doing in the simulator um, translated really well and props to the engineers to making that making that so easy for me. We got shuffled back a little bit at the start. Um, maybe it's like that first race, like just trying to take it easy type of thing and stay, stay clean. And um, once I realized that we had like a couple percent more energy than most of the cars in front of us, right? It was like, it was go time, right? And so I made some, um, some good aggressive moves around veterans in, in the series and that felt really good. Honestly, I don't really have any expectations for myself. I know what I'm capable of. I think as long as I just keep progressing, the, the speed and, and you know the qualifying results and, and ultimately the points, paying positions, the podiums, the wins, I, I, think, um, I think they will come. Oliver Askew up into the points. Great job in the Andretti car. Well, I've always had a very close relationship with Andretti Autosport. Um, and obviously they've been in the series for a very long time since the beginning. We've, uh, we've spoke about this opportunity um, and it finally finally came together, uh, I'd say, yeah, around November last year. So I'm um, very happy to be here. He's a guy that I think has a ton of talent and a very smart driver. Uh, he's, he's a bit of a chess player. So that's the sort of type of driver you want here in Formula E and uh, he's loving it. That's the other thing. He's just having a blast doing it. So I think, uh, you know, we're expecting big things. Obviously right now he's drinking out of a fire hose, but uh, you know, as, as we get more into the season, I think you'll see his results get better and better. He thinks when he's out there driving, and uh, as I said, that's what you want uh, in a Formula E driver. You know, we felt being an American company, it was great to bring an American driver as well. So uh, it all worked out really well. I mean, Mario and Michael Andretti are absolute icons in the sport, right? And he's, Michael's built a, a dynasty of a race team and, um, you know, they've been involved in, in many different series. And when you walk into the shop, they have, you know, all the, the banners on the, on the ceiling of all the championships and Indy 500s that they've won and you really realize like how successful this team and how how knowledgeable and and, um, and experienced the personnel within the team are right um, and so there's there's like a lot of long time engineers and mechanics that have have worked there and that's really important we want to win the championship you know I think we almost did last year and uh, you know I think we have the ingredients to do it this year. To be the only American in the series um, is a fantastic opportunity for me. Uh, a lot of pressure that comes with that as well, but yeah, super excited to be racing in New York. Uh, hopefully we'll have a good contingent of American fans out there for that race. And yeah, to be the only American in the series is, is an honor and hopefully I can fly the flag high for those guys. So racing doesn't run in the family. Um, my dad, he took me out to uh, Palm Beach International Raceway, back then known as Morosa Motorsports Park, 
it's about 30 minutes west of where we live in Jupiter, Florida. So it's our local track. And yeah, he just had the, the idea to bring me out there for my eighth birthday. And um, we rented some go-karts together and eventually it became uh, a father-son hobby and eventually started racing nationally, got our own equipment. Um, and as it, as it started to get more and more expensive, uh, luckily, we, we found a, a sponsor that that uh, that was able to support us for the majority of my karting career. You know, there's a lot of sacrifices that I had to make both socially and with my schooling, and um, it's I kind of left myself in a situation where I had like no plan B. But I think that's that's ultimately like how I was able to get here to become a professional driver because I had to work so hard to make it happen because I had no no other option. Um, so I think that, that approach was quite unique and I wouldn't, looking back on it now, I wouldn't change it. Um, but I'd say in 2017 when I won the USF 2000 scholarship and um, started racing in the road to Indy and in the IndyCar paddock, uh, the, first, the first weekend in St. Pete I, I won my first race and it was that, at that moment where I was like, okay, we're going to IndyCar, you know. Obviously it wasn't until a, a couple years later that that dream came true.